Good morning, guys. Hope everybody's doing well. You probably are noticing this is not live. It's pre-recorded. I'm sorry. Had a previous conflict that I had to take care of Wednesday morning, so I couldn't be here recording this and there at the same time. So I'm recording this on Tuesday evening, but it is still for Wednesday morning. So thanks for getting up. If you're here at 8 o'clock to join us for our 8 o'clock time, really glad you did. Uh, I, I am thankful for you. We are moving through the book of 1 Thessalonians. We did chapter 1. On the last three lessons, we talked about the fact that the, the main idea, remember, understanding the main idea of a book is key in understanding what each individual passage is teaching you. And we determined that the main idea of the book of 1 Thessalonians is that Jesus is coming soon. And every chapter or every way we're breaking this up is going to have a different implication. Last week and the week before, we said Jesus is coming soon. And chapter 1 says, so we should give thanks. This week... We're going to start with the idea that Jesus is coming soon, so we should strive to live our lives in a way that's pleasing to God. And that's what really chapter 2 is going to teach us. We're not going to get through all of chapter 2 today, but I am going to read. We're actually going to get through the first eight verses today. That's our goal. The first eight verses. But the whole chapter is teaching us different ways that we're going to strive to please God. And one of the most important ways that we can practically work to change in our lives is through the way we talk, speaking the right way, saying the right words at the right times to the right people. It's key to spiritual maturity in so many ways because really what you say in, so, in, in many different aspects is really who you are. And that's why James spends so much time talking about the tongue being an unquenchable fire. And that if we, anyone who's bridled his tongue is a perfect man because we are prone constantly to say, um, the wrong things to people. And sometimes we say it with the wrong motives. And so James, I mean, sorry, Paul, excuse me, guys, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 starts with teaching us how to speak with boldness. And that one of the ways in which we live our lives in a way that's pleasing to God is to actually speak with boldness. But he's going to teach us some aspects of the right type of boldness. And so let's read together chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. Here's what it says. For you yourselves know, brothers, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully treated at Philippi, as you know, we had boldness in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in the midst of much conflict. For our appeal does not spring from error or impurity or any attempt to deceive. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak not to please man, but to please God who tests our hearts. For we never came with words of flattery, as you know, not with a pretext for greed, God is witness, nor did we seek glory from people, whether from you or from others, though we could have made demands as apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. So, being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become very dear to us. So speaking with boldness means some things. And Paul is going to spend this time unpacking what it means to speak with boldness. Because sometimes, sometimes what we say is bold is really just mean. And there's a difference between those two things. There's a difference between speaking boldly in a way that honors God and just being mean to people. And sometimes we can't divide between those two. But Paul's going to help us out here. So the first thing he tells us in verse 2. He says, we have boldness in God to declare to you the gospel of God in the midst of much conflict. And in the midst of much conflict, he's speaking boldly. One of the things that boldness does is it speaks clearly when everything else seems hazy and fuzzy. So in the middle of conflict, you're speaking the truth. You know, sometimes we can think that as Christians, we ought to always be nice. In other words, we have to always try to avoid having conflict at all. But the reality is you're going to have conflict. And if you just choose to avoid it, then the other person is just going to feel like they're winning. And so how do you do this? You speak the truth of Scripture in a bold way in the middle of conflict. And that's what Paul is saying that we do. Our culture is going to push back against anything that we would say is exclusive truth. So we need to be aware of that and be willing to continue to speak the truth, not to be rude or mean, but just to say this is the truth. But then the second thing he says that balances this out, because it's not just to argue with people, right? He says, to declare to you the gospel of God in the midst of much con conflict. Four, verse three, our appeal does not spring from error or impurity or any attempt to deceive. In other words, Paul's saying, we know we're saying the right things to you. 
We're saying truth. We're speaking truth to you. For, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak, and this is key, not to please man, but to please God who tests our hearts. We speak in such a way that our speaking is pleasing to God. Now, here's the key to this. In order to speak in such a way that our, our, our speaking is pleasing to God, first, we need to be sure that whatever we're saying, we're not saying just so that we could get something off of our chest or so that we could express our displeasure about something. Sometimes what we what we say is boldness, is what I said, is really just meanness. It's really just, I want you to know how much you've hurt me, so I'm going to express that in a way that's very carefully carved to, to hurt you to wound you, to, to, or, or to, to just shut down an argument, shut down a discussion. So I'm just going to basically use my words to punch you in the face to get you to be quiet. That is not speaking in a way that pleases God because at its core, that sort of language is really only intended to please you or I. When I speak that way, I'm really trying to please me, which is still pleasing man. But instead, I want to speak in such a way that pleases God. You remember, Jesus gives us two great commandments, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So that means that both of the ways that we're speaking to people, that when we're speaking to people, we want to do those things. You know, Really and truly, it's not really more complicated, but it is super hard that when we speak, we will want to violate commandment one and commandment two. That's what it means to speak in such a way that pleases God. But then he also talks about avoiding flattery, right? So he says, we, have, we, we speak to please God who tests our hearts. So it's God knows what's in your heart when the words come out your mouth. He knows. He knows. And so you can try to convince anybody else that you had the best of intentions. Man, the reality is you can't fool God. He knows your intentions with your words. He knows my intentions with my words. Four, verse five, we never came with words of flattery. Pleasing God with our words and speaking boldness means not flattering. Now that can be very difficult. If you're an extrovert like I am, if you're a person who just likes to be liked like I do, it can be very easy to simply just flatter people, to give these empty compliments with the with the goal not of making that other person feel good about them, but making that other person feel good about you. That's flattery. Flattery at the end is my manipulation, me trying to manipulate you with my words so that you will like me more because I said nice things about you. It's the opposite of how you honor God with your mouth. And so he says, we don't speak words of flattery, as you know, nor the pretext for greed. So we don't speak greedily. We don't use our words in such a way that we try to to, to manipulate and get something from you. And he says, God is our witness. In other words, God's going to test my heart. He's going to know. Next thing, the next thing that speaking the truth with boldness means is it means that we're giving God glory. Nor do we seek glory from people, whether you or from others. And that we could have made demands as apostles of Christ. So he says, we're not looking for you to praise us because of the words we're using. You know, I think that's a hard thing in teaching. It's a hard thing in teaching like this. It's a hard thing in preaching. To, to not simply try to preach so that people will approve of what you're saying or so that people will glorify you for what you're saying, it, it, but to give glory to God, to, to be sure that whatever you, you, your words are a, a vehicle through which glory goes to God, not to you. And that's what it means to, to please God by speaking the truth and by using our words carefully, right? So then he goes from this, but we were gentle among you in verse seven, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. Isn't that interesting? It's possible, it's possible to be bold and to be gentle at the same time. Now, we don't like that. That's, that, that doesn't please me often. It doesn't please my flesh at all uh, because I, I feel like I do pretty good at bold or I can do pretty good at gentle, but I can't really do good at both at the same time. And yet, we have this picture of Jesus who spoke a lot and used a lot of words. And uh, very often, would you see these perfect examples of speaking truth in a bold way, uh, but being gentle and speaking the truth. And so we want to be careful to show right gentleness. Now, right, here's wrong, wrong gentleness is this. If I see you and I know that what you're doing is sinful and that it, that it violates the law and will of God and that it's not good for you, right, wrong gentleness, wrong gentleness, is to just avoid talking about it, to basically talk about everything else, but not really bring up this issue. Because I don't really want to offend you. I don't want to upset you. That's wrong gentleness. That's, that's not gentleness at all. That's passivity. See, gentleness is active, not passive. Active gentleness is figuring out ways to communicate to someone that you love them so much that you want to point them to the truth of God because they're not going to find their greatest pleasure 
until they're living in a way that's delightful to the Lord. That's right, gentleness. And that's what Paul says they were doing, and that's what Paul's teaching us to do when we strive to please God with our words. And so he says, we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. You think about that. You think about the ways, <clears throat> now, this, is, this illustration may break down uh, because we're in the middle of, of a quarantine time, right? And so some of us, many of us are, are just at home with our kids all the time. And so it becomes really difficult to speak gently to them. Think about how you would want someone else to speak to your children. You got a good picture of how you're supposed to speak to everybody. You know, how do you, how do you want someone to speak to your youngest child? How do you, how do you expect that someone's going to treat the meek and the gentle and the, and the hurting among you? That's how you're supposed to talk to everybody. We're supposed to speak gently to people, right? But then at the same time, he says, uh, so being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves because you had become very dear to us. There's that love your neighbor as yourself thing, right? So here's the thing. Speaking truth with boldness and gentleness is nothing less than using your words to share yourself, being willing to share yourself through the language that you're using. And here's the reality. Even if we don't use gentle words, we're still sharing ourselves. We're still telling people, this is who I am. That moment that I am prone to just fly off the handle and speak <clears throat> in really, really abrasive ways and say things that are offensive, or I would call them just direct, or that's just who I am. The, the times that I'm tempted to do those things, what I'm really showing you is who I am. But, but, if I could figure out how to take the time to think about the right words said to the right people at the right times and in the right ways so that that person looks at me and says, I love Jesus more because you said that thing to me, we figured out how to glorify God with our words. So that's what I want to encourage you to do. I don't know who all listens to this devotion, but I know that all of you are sinners because I am too. And so here's what I want to encourage you to do. Somewhere this week, somewhere along the line this week, there's been somebody that we could have spoken to in a more Christ-honoring manner. Would you make a commitment? Would you just, in your prayer journal or in your Bible, just jot down initials or even the first name of a person as you get here at 1 Thessalonians, just a person in your life, that you need to change the way you talk to that person? And then would you commit to just reading these first few verses in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2? Because God desires for us to change, and he gives us what we need to change. And we strive to please God, and that begins in this chapter, in many ways, the same way it begins in our lives, with affecting the way we talk to people. So friends, thank you for listening. Just a quick review. I know we did a lot today. I'll put it in the comments below so you'll have it. All right. We want to strive to please God through the way we use our words. And here's what he, here's what he does. Here are the points that he has. Strive to please God in the midst of conflict. Strive to please God so that you're pleasing to him, just generally to please God. Strive to please God by avoiding flattery. Strive to, please, strive to please God by using your words to bring glory to him. Strive to please God by using right gentleness. And then the last one, strive to please God so that we will share with other people who we are and what Christ has done. That's my prayer for you guys this week uh, as we move into the weekend. As we spend a lot of time at home, there's a good chance that that name you wrote down in your Bible is a family member um, or, or, or somebody that you're in this with. And I want to pray that you would you'd be gentle toward that person, uh, even as I pray that for myself. So let me pray for us and we'll be done today. Father, thank you for your Bible. Thank you for the book of 1 Thessalonians. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to please you by the way we use our words. Help us, Lord, to use them. Help us to speak with boldness so that we will please you and bring glory to your name. Help us to avoid the trap of flattery. Uh, help us to avoid desiring just to get glory by the way we use our words uh, for ourselves. But Lord, help us to please you by striving to speak the truth, being gentle, even as Christ was gentle, but right gentleness, speaking the truth and loving people. Lord, help us to apply the two great commandments to the way we use our tongues. Help us to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And Lord, help us to love you um, through loving our neighbor as ourselves. We thank you 
Again, for today, I pray for each person listening to this devotion that you would bless them with a good day at work or at home, with their kids, with their spouses, with their friends. Uh, Lord, or if they're home and alone, I pray that you would help them to be keenly aware of the presence of your Spirit and be quick to reach out to others so that they might have some companionship. Father, we thank you for the gospel that has changed us, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. I will see you. We'll be back here again on Sunday morning. Don't forget, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. is our community prayer time. Jump on. We're going to be live. We'll put the link up on Facebook, and you can just come over to YouTube and join us. And then Sunday morning, house church groups, we'll, have, we'll put the material out early so your house church groups can have discussion together. Thanks, guys. I love you guys very much. I miss you, and I cannot wait to see you again.